I might have bitten off more than I can chew. I literally just got off the friggin' water. God, I'm so This is what you gotta be careful with. Woo! Yes, I'm sitting here butt naked. On my last episode, I paddled down multiple lakes to get to my beautiful campsite. After many failed fishing attempts, today I planned on paddling to an area on the map where it showed there was a river, where hopefully I could find some brook trout. I know I'm not a very good fisherman. However, fishing constantly as a child has taught me a lot of the basics. I'm used to fishing rivers and pond areas in shallow waters down to about 20 feet or so. So that's what I'm going to try to look for. Fishing for trout is also new to me, so I'm excited to see what happens. Unfortunately, what looked like a river on the map was just a swampy, shallow area. With no bass or pike in this lake, this area would just harbor more of the minnows and small fish that I was already catching. After fishing for quite some time and only getting a few bites, I noticed Kai was having a hard time in the direct sun and extreme heat. So I decided to paddle us back so she could have a drink and cool down. Alright guys, we're back from uh, the little fishing trip we took. Kai is wolfing down her water. It looks like the uh, cloudy weather is coming in, maybe some rain. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make biscuits. I got a lot of beans and chili that I brought. I want to just have it as a dipper. It's not a, a crazy, sorry, it flies. It's not a crazy recipe. There's only basically three ingredients. I gotta wash my hands and then uh, we'll get started on the video for how to make wilderness biscuits. See, 3G version one bar. I don't know how, but I was able to contact my dad <clears throat> and ask uh, if there was a fire ban on. He said no. As of today, there's no fire ban. So that's perfect. Um, what I wanted to show you on how to make this fire, it's a ferro rod. And this is um, from your laundry filter. So this is just like lint and hair and fur and stuff like that. So I'm going to be using this to catch my, f my spark. Always clean your dryer filter. So I'm going to make a fire bundle. I probably don't have to do this, um, but it's just extra precaution to catch the flame, catch the spark. So I'm just putting my knife so, so, so slightly on the cedar, getting these fibrous pieces of bark here. Just that a little bit. So this is another easy way. Um, dead cedar tree. You can peel off some of the bark and bring it back to camp and just do this. Helps break up all the fibers. I don't like this position because I'm bent over. I don't get a good grip on this, but I'm just holding these open like that. So we're gonna have to try. Here we go. Oh, that works amazingly. See? If you hold it like this, if you hold it like this, it can get some airflow in it. Whew. Wow. Oh yeah, she boiling now. 
find a spot for you. Beauty. This container packs enough to have about 10 coffees. Okay, so to start, you need some lukewarm water. I have some dry instant yeast. I'm gonna add some of that in. Now to that yeast, you wanna add sugar to it. Mixture of brown and white sugar. Just gonna add some of that in there. And now we're gonna give it a stir. We're gonna let that sit. And as we let it sit, the yeast is gonna do its magic and it should start bubbling up. This is what it should look like. Nice and bubbly. To that, you wanna add your flour. This might turn out horribly, but it's the best I can do. that mixture I'm gonna add salt and also some pepper so here's what we have looks neat doesn't it now you just gotta work it work it honey Pretty good right now. That's not too bad. So now it looks like that. Now I'm just gonna cover it. And wait, I got uh, an hour or so to wait for that dough to rise. So I think I'm going to throw my lure back in the water and try and catch a fish. As you can see, I was able to fit, fit a rock in there pretty decently, so I got that spot open. So I'm going to be able to fit my dough in there. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Boom, it expanded a little bit. Not a whole lot, but that's what you're going to have to expect. That's pretty good. It's nice and soft. So now is when I got to play with it for a while. Yeah, everyone, every time they need dough, they sing, I don't even need that dough. Got a nicely uh, kneaded up dough, rounded it nicely. I'm going to let that sit for a bit longer, see what happens, and then cut her in half. Got to build this flame back up and boil some water. Now the positives of not being on that island I got a lot of firewood. When you're on that island, you only have a specific amount of firewood you can get. Then you have to get on your canoe and go elsewhere for more. At least this way, I just have to walk. And luckily, I guess there's been a few storms recently. There's a lot of deadfall. Like when I got here, there was it was littered with some. And I just went over there near the water and there's an old tree and it's shedding all its branches. And I just found all this. Now with any of the really hard stuff, I would use my Boreal 21. You can see the handle in it there. But this stuff isn't hard. 
So the one problem I am having is finding hard wood that I can collect with the saw. There's not much around here unless I want to go and cut down a tree, which I really don't want to do if I don't have to, which I have wood, so I don't have to. But in a horrible, in a horrible scenario, I have that Boreal 21 to do that if I had to. This is the Fiskers 14 inch hatchet. You can get it at Canadian Tire or on Amazon. I'll have a link down here. It's uh, lightweight, it's got a hollow handle, it feels very nice in the hand, and it's been cutting perfectly for me, so nothing wrong to say about it yet. It's a decent amount for it being warm. If it was cold out, I would have to gather like five times that amount for tonight. I do these types of trips in a way that I'm going to be safe, it's going to be fun, I'm going to you know, it's going to be informative. And I love being out here and doing all this types of all these types of things. And it's amazing. I feel at home here. This is like, could I ask for anything more beautiful than that? And it's because of this that, you know, I want to live a healthy lifestyle and I want to be around long enough that when I have kids I can take them out somewhere like this and so I don't want to do these trips not prepared for what if scenarios emergency situations such that I get myself into trouble and hurt or sick or anything like that so I, I take some extra precautions because I want to be lo around long enough to show my kids this and be able to be with them and my future kids I should say that's that I mean I it does cost me in the end for uh, the amount of gear I bring because I bring way more than I need in terms of food bring way more than I need in terms of uh, med a med kit. Uh, the safety things, you know, I bring extra knives in case one breaks or goes dull or I lose it. I bring a lot of extra lights, all of that kind of stuff. And it's also in case I find someone else who's in need of help, you know, why not? I can carry quite the burden. Um, my name is Daniel Weirdenberg. It's in my DNA as a Weirdenberg to be able to start something and have to finish it, or at least get to a point where you can say that you did it. Someone's up from their nap. You good girl. You want to come with Papa? Come on. Good girl. Was that fun? Was that comfy? Look at that. That swelled up about maybe twice its size. I got two little puff balls in there. I got this left over. This I'm putting to the side. Okay. okay, here's what we're doing with the beans. Some leftover coffee in there. Good, 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 good. Ooh, there's some pork belly in there. While I'm waiting, I set up the hammock. There's a rain fly that comes with it. I believe the bread and the beans are done. So I'm gonna take those out. Turn this around, just like that. Perfect. Gonna use this to lift that up. Look at how nice and soft these are. Sweet. Beans, you can hear them boiling. Give them a swish. Let's see. Oh yeah, those are beany. Alrighty. These baked beans have a 
onions and bits of pork belly in them. And there's way more beans than I thought there'd be. And the best part about bringing a can is that can can be used as a cup. I can boil stuff in it. Along with boiling, I can cook in it. I could create a portable stove out of it. A whole lot of things I could do with it. In some situations, I could create a lure out of it. It's a natural container, so I can collect things with it and, you know, transfer stuff. Maybe I have an ember and I need to take the ember from one place to another. I can put the ember in here. Along with uh, all those things that I can use the can for, I could also, you know, if I have the right um, tools for it, I could tear it apart and create a knife out of it. I could use it for, you know, incredible situations where I fasten myself a bow. I could use it for arrows. Um, I could make hooks out of it. There's so many different things you can use this for. So it's pretty good to have with you when you're backpacking. Oh my god. I'm not saying this just because I'm recording this. This is one of the best pieces of doughy bread I have ever had. It's so soft. Oh my god. Okay. I'm going to sit and enjoy this. Sucks to be you guys. Because there wasn't direct heat on the bottom of the bowl, the um, bun didn't get burned and it has this nice crisp to it. It seems as though it's the little things that get to me the most, in a good way. It's not about making the most money, getting the best scores, reaching a million views, seeing an animal, or catching a big fish. It's the sun shining, the perfect bun, the dark roast coffee, and the peaceful melody that the backcountry sings. I truly can't ask for anything more than that. The big things have a lot of drawback. They can carry massive amounts of stress and anxiety. Money can be lost and time can be wasted, but memories like the one I'm making right now last a lifetime. I can share these experiences and skills with my future kids and teach them how to follow in my footsteps if they wish to do so, since backcountry camping is a lost art, really. Ontario is a beautiful place. It holds many unexplored gems if you dig deep enough. It's hard to imagine living in a place where you can't travel for a few hours, have a little adventure, and land in an area such as this. When you are alone, it's a great time to reflect on where you are and where you want to go. With no distractions, you can understand the finer things in life and see where you can burn off some dead wood that may still be attached to you so that you can find what's holding you back or realize the basics of what you need in order to survive peacefully. Finding peace and staying humble is what I believe to be the most important goal because you can't dwell on past mistakes. Money can fix many things and open up many doors, but time is everything. Memories and stories last forever. And if you are lucky enough to spend some time exploring the great outdoors, then it will truly change your life for the better. There we go. River monster. Woo -woo -woo. Now that is one big fish. Got to hold that with two hands, I think. Yeah. Okay. Hi, buddy. Flies are certainly out tonight. See the fish jumping out of the water for it. Baby. 
Kai's gone nuts for this guy. You're okay, buddy. You're okay. Kaya, hey! Stop it. That's my homemade pita I made. It's both soft and chewy, but also has a decent crunch to it. It feels like uh, a pretzel and a bagel mixed. It's amazing. And that peppercorn, it's peppers and pepper and beef and rice. Mini stir fry thing. After another amazing meal, it was finally time for Kai and I to call it a night. I'm just, uh, filtering some water. Today is very, it's very calm. Very calm on the lake. So, I was thinking maybe today I'll pack up <clears throat> and I'll go to another site. I'm making pancakes, so I gotta make a batter first. So we got some good old Aunt Jemima Pancake mix here. Put that in. A little tiny bit of cinnamon. So we got our pancake batter, a little bit of cinnamon. Just gonna add some water. You gotta make the sound effects. If you don't, then it doesn't count, right? Looks like that. So that's pretty dang good. Boom. Oh yes. Perfect. Well, doesn't look completely appetizing, but bacon and pancakes, not gonna do much better than that. I woke up at the middle of the night to beeping and it was my GoPro turning off from a dead battery. Right before I went to bed, I put a fully charged battery in it. Just in case something happened that night, I'd be able to pick it up and go. And I don't know if Kaya's foot hit it or maybe I hit it or in my sleep I said GoPro turn on. Or maybe the lecture I was listening to said something like that and it turned on <clears throat> and it wasted the whole battery. An hour and 40 minutes of recording. I'm at my uh, food bag. I got it way up in the air for all the bear. You can see that's about around 10 feet and Maybe eight feet across, so nothing's getting that. Unless they climb up on that tree branch and it breaks. So I'm here because if you can see the water, it is blowing. The current is going this way. And I'm going to get in my canoe and continue on that way. Now, this lake goes over there and it comes around. I'm on like a really huge peninsula, then it goes around again this way, and then it goes that way. It's a very big lake, so I'm gonna hop in once I get all my stuff and continue on that way. And then once I turn this way, I might be fighting the current, but there's a couple sites there that I might hop onto. I'm just curious, I wanna see what they look like. So I'm gonna take this down and continue on. Packing up all your gear can take a lot of time and effort, but with the fair weather and the wind on my side, I figured it was for the best. 
Makaya friggin' ran off. I'm just about to leave and she ran off and I haven't heard from her in for so long. I've been calling her. She normally comes back, but... God! It's been 10 minutes of me searching for her in the forest. I can't find her. I haven't heard her at all. I don't know what to do. I've been calling her. Kaya! Come here! I don't know. Battery's, gonna, battery's low. I gotta just turn it off and look for her. God. Jeez, she had something in her mouth. As soon as she saw me, she dropped it and then just booked it back towards the campsite. Jeez. Gotta scale this hill. Which doesn't look like anything on the camera, but pretty decent. Okay, she's by the thing over there. She's in the water, getting some water. She must have been running like crazy. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay. All right. Oh, get back to the campsite, however far away that is. I wish I knew about mushrooms and fungus because that looks like it tastes so good, but it will probably kill me. If you don't know much about mushrooms, it's best not to even touch it because in most cases, mushroom, you eat it, you die. You touch it, and you can get really sick. Best to stay away from them and only, only, only eat mushrooms when you're with someone who's a professional at eating plants and mushrooms and wild edibles. I got the loon saying goodbye to me. I was reluctant to leave this wonderful campsite, but I knew that the closer I was to where I needed to go, the easier my days of travel would be. There were pockets here and there that looked like great areas for fishing. I tried everything. Under logs, rocky areas, deep water, shallow water, shady water, and nothing was working. So I took the time to get some underwater videos of the little fish following me around the shallow waters. This bald eagle seemed to have more skill than I did, catching a fish just seconds after I found it. After an hour or so of paddling, I found my new campsite, and I'll leave the next couple exciting days for another video. The site doesn't seem too bad. We're gonna go explore. Kaya, you forgot your paddles. That is a welcomed sight. I'm determined to catch a fish, even if it kills me. Just eating some sunflower seeds.